Thank you so much. Let's see. Good morning. So nice to see such great faces in the audience. I am very excited to be here with all of you today. I'd like to thank the Media Literacy Coalition and, of course, the Frederick Nauman Foundation for having me here. It's so wonderful to be back at this forum. Last year, I participated virtually, and so I'm really happy that this year I could be here in person. And for those joining online, hello. Next year, we'll see you in person. So we are here to discuss a really important topic, disinformation. And I am honored to be able to open this session with a distinguished panel of experts, many of whom I know and I've got great, great respect for, journalists, communication experts, professors. Uh, so I'm very excited that they will be on this panel. Um, thank you to them for their leadership in this field. As we discuss disinformation, and we have been for years, we see the conversation developing so that now most people know that disinformation exists, fake news, that term is part of our lexicon, and what is more challenging now is how the average citizen detects fake news, disinformation, and explaining the destructive consequences of disinformation, and then working together to curb it. No one country is immune from disinformation. Right? Even in the United States, we grapple with this. And what we see everywhere around the world, you know, as an example, one leader will say, let me take this little piece of disinformation and just throw it into the mix because I want to go after my political opponent and I'm going to try to gain from that and it'll be fine because I'm just going to throw this one snowball. Right? But the term snowball effect, <laughs> this is where it comes from. From something small, we get something very, very destructive. And only malign actors, only negative things come from these environments of chaos. Disinformation decreases trust in public institutions. It sows conflict between societies. It increases hate. And it undermines democratic institutions. So our panel today is going to go into more detail on the consequences of disinformation. So you are going to be hearing from experts about this. It's not only important to talk about the consequences of disinformation but also possible ways to combat it. And in this area, I'm, I'm going to give you just two thoughts of my own on this, right? The first, lead by example. Lead by example. Each leader, whether it is in an organization, in a community, in a political party, in a government, each leader should not spread disinformation. The tone at the top matters. And what will happen is respect will quickly become disrespect in an environment of, of disinformation. Leading by example also means you have to stand by the truth, even when it's not popular. And I say that uh, because we see this now during this COVID pandemic, right? In many societies, including in the United States, right? Those who are opposed to vaccinations. Okay, so what happens? 
disinformation by these malign actors. It makes people confused. There's discord. There's uh, discouraged about using these vaccines. And so what happens? People die. And I'll just say it's nearly 29,000 people have died in Bulgaria. 29,000. And just this past week alone, 764 people have died from the COVID. So if a large percentage of a population doesn't believe in the vaccines, rather than saying, I'm going to ride that popular wave because I want to become popular too, stand by the truth. Do you know what I'm doing right after this conference? I'm going to get a, my booster shot. <laughs> I'm relatively young. I think I'm relatively healthy, yet I'm going to go get that booster shot. I am telling you proudly, I am not afraid to say it. And I'm doing that because I believe the vaccination will get us, will get the world out of this pandemic. And so I want to do my part. The second thing that we can do together to combat disinformation is teach others to be smarter about disinformation. And that is why I love this conference. I love the fact that it's exactly what you are doing. You are taking this step. And we need to talk about the problem. We need to get the leading minds of our society, which we have with our fabulous uh, panelists today. You need to come together, propose action, um, and the Media Literacy Coalition has been doing this now for years, raising awareness, trying to teach this in schools, and I'm proud to say that this coalition started with just a little bit of assistance in 2018 from our embassy, and it's grown into this fabulous uh, coalition. Uh, so I'm very proud of all the work that you do, uh, and I know that you will continue to do. So for all of us together, right, it's important for us to fight disinformation through these media literacy programs by building professional capacity of journalists, defending independent media. You all know how much I care about independent media, and um, make sure there's no state capture of independent media, free it from the oligarchic influence, um, wherever it is around the world. And all of us must be vigilant in defending journalists and continuing the work for transparency and media ownership. Again, every one of us can play that role. So with that, I just want to say again, speak the truth. Stand by the truth, set that example, uh, teach others the same, um, and um, be kind to one another. So uh, best uh, wishes for this panelists, and thank you again to all of you.